Liberator's down. All right, here we go. The B-24 Liberator was the most produced bomber of World War II, and it had a significant impact on the war. Despite this, it sometimes takes a back seat to the B-17 on film. Stand by your plane till further notice. Well, how long? Hey, don't tell me doodly, sir. Sadly, today only 13 B-24s survive, of which just two are airworthy. However, they do show up in a handful of movies that pay tribute to this beautiful aircraft. So let's take a look at why the B-24 was a valued bomber and highlight a few movies it was featured in. The consolidated B-24 Liberator remains the world's most produced bomber, multi-engine aircraft, and American military aircraft in history, with approximately 18,500 produced between 1940 and 1945. Despite not always getting the same limelight as the B-17, the B-24 was heavily involved in the U.S. strategic bombing campaign in Europe, but it's probably most known for its bombing operations in the Pacific, as well as anti-submarine roles over the Atlantic. The B-24 had an excellent range of 1,540 miles, or 2,480 kilometers fully loaded, extended to 3,750 miles without a bomb load. A B-24 could fly up to 40% further than its B-17 partner. But the B-24's service ceiling was only 28,000 feet, or 8,500 meters, significantly below the B-17s, making it more vulnerable to anti-air fire. But its range made it ideal for the massive Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The transport version, the C-87, also replace the C-47 Skytrain for longer range and higher capacity transport. The B-24 was designed by the Consolidated Aircraft Company and powered by four air-cooled radial engines. Sometimes called the flying boxcar, it's easy to recognize by its spacious box-like fuselage and twin tail assembly. The B-24 first entered World War II flown by the British but these early models lack defensive armament, so they are used primarily for transport including VIPs such as Winston Churchill. In total, 1,700 B-24s went to the British. B-24 starting with the B-24D would see significant and continued upgrades in the form of 50 caliber machine guns. Late model B-24Ds carried 11 50 caliber machine guns. American World War II doctrine focused significantly on heavy, long-range bombing, with the idea that the war could be ended by increasingly advanced, heavily armed, long-range bombers. Significant resources were spent on continuously upgrading heavy bombers. American bomber crew training was also given substantial focus. One of the best examples of this training can be found in the 1943 training film, The Rear Gunner, which can be found in full on YouTube. They're counting the kill, tabulating the score of each student. The bullets, dipped in different color, lithographic paint, leave their mark on the canvas, thus enabling the instructor to see how many hits the gunner has scored. Hey, see, we can load my score there! For anyone wanting some perspective on the emphasis America placed on bombers, watch the Walt Disney production Victory Through Air Power. It is both entertaining and has some interesting perspectives on the military's outlook for winning wars with air power alone. Jeepers! President Roosevelt wants 50,000 planes a year. Backed by 25 years of constant pioneering, American aviation met the challenge. One way America attempted to dominate the sky was with the box formation, a formation that allowed heavily armed bombers to protect each other. Though these formations were effective, they could not repulse significant fighter aircraft on their own. Liberator cockpits also had less visibility than the B-17s, and they could not fly as high. B-24 box formations were not as tightly protected as the B-17s. Here they come, boys. Call them out. What the B-24 had over the B-17 was that it could carry more bombs, further and faster. The B-24 could reach 290 miles per hour, with a 5,000 pound bomb load for 1,700 miles. One series that demonstrates the ability and range of the B-24 
though tragically, is the sinking of the Laconia, a two-part miniseries following the sinking of a British troop ship in the Atlantic in 1942 by a German U-boat, and subsequent rescue of the crew by the same U-boat, which radioed its position on all channels. Unfortunately, a B-24 Liberator both spotted and bombed the U-boat, resulting in the deaths of dozens of the Laconia's survivors. This incident largely changed submarine rescue attempts for the remainder of the war. The two-part series is a good representation of the real event. 13 Rue Madeleine is an old spy film from 1947, and it gets big props for highlighting the role B-24s played in arming resistance groups and airdropping agents in mainland Europe. Modified B-24s were involved in thousands of moonlit sorties, pair-dropping agents and supplies for the OSS and British SOE. These B-24s would fly low, painted in over 500 pounds of black camouflage paint. Agents parachuted from the Joel Hole, created by removing the B-24's ball turret. B-24s on such missions dropped over 4,500 tons of supplies to agents and resistance fighters. They sometimes color-marked the parachutes to indicate the type of equipment being dropped. Three. Beautiful Dreamer, 2006. Though this film doesn't have a large budget and uses a fair bit of dated CGI, it's a significant tribute to the B-24 and B-24 crews. The film was largely funded by a former B-24 pilot, Willis Miller, and loosely follows the real events of the B-24 Starduster crew. It's overall a wholesome film, and does feature real B-24s along with the CGI. We are here. Unbroken from 2014, this is likely the most well-known film to follow the fate of a B-24 crew. Though the film is primarily centered around Louis Zamperini, an Olympic athlete who survives horrific treatment as a Japanese prisoner of war, the movie has significant and well-done bombing and combat sequences, highlighting the B-24's prolific use in the Pacific. The flight sequences really show the terror and vulnerability crews had to overcome in the massive expanses of the Pacific, where any mechanical failure could be a slow death sentence in the hours it took to return to a landing strip. Ultimately, the success of the B-24 came down to its payload and range. Statistics don't tell the full story of the B-24. It was indeed less robust than the B-17, and having the nickname the Flying Coffin didn't help its reputation, but the B-24 took on some of the deadliest longer-range missions of the war, such as those from Libya to the Romanian oil fields. The B-24's range also allowed it to sink 93 U-boats in the North Atlantic, and in the Pacific, smash Japanese airfields and industry. By the end of the war, the Boeing B-29 Superfortress, with its incredible speed and altitude, took over the role of long-range bombing. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on the beautiful B-24 Liberator. And thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next video.